on the podcast we've got Chris Lynn. He's currently playing across the world in different T20 competitions. We get in depth about that and what teams he's currently playing for. He's also played for Australia and we we'll talk about his goals for the next couple of years. I really hope you guys enjoy. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, well, I'm pretty excited. Normally I'm interviewed by people a bit, a bit more older than you, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing what you got. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, well, I know I'm going to have a lot of fun and have a bit of a laugh and, uh, yeah, get to know each other. Yeah. What did you want to be when you were growing up? What did I want to be when I was growing up? Um, oh, I wanted to be Superman, but um, that didn't happen. But I actually really loved rugby league. So someone like Andrew Johns, Darren Lockyer, these guys are my idol. Um yeah, so rugby league player, uh, play, like Brisbane Broncos, State of Origin. Uh, those things were something that I absolutely loved uh, watching. And then, um, funny enough, cricket was actually like later down the track when I was about, you know, 10, 10, 10 or 12. Um, you know, whereas rugby league, I was five years old and I wanted to play for the Broncos. So a footy player was, was definitely up there. Yeah. How would your oldest friend describe you? How would my oldest friend describe me? Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. How would he? Uh, so my, one of my oldest friends, um, probably my best friend, I played junior rugby league with since I was about um, 10 years old. And um, I played a lot of rep footy with him, rep cricket, met North cricket with him and met North rugby league. Um, he, play, he went on to play for the uh, North Devils in the Queensland Cup. And then also the Sunshine Coast Falcons, um, you know, Interest Super Cup. He was the captain of them. Um, that's a level before the Broncos. So um, how would he describe me? Um, I don't know, really. Probably I describe him as he peaked in high school. So, <laughs> um, but I don't know, probably, um, you know, probably a smart ass, if anything. Um, because I've always given it to him, you know, whether we're playing backyard cricket, backyard footy, I've always had that um, little bit of cheekiness um, to me. And yeah, but in saying that, he's, he's very proud of me. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a good ride. Yeah. What are you, what's my, what's your, what are you most proud of in your life so far? Um, most proud of, um, probably playing for Australia. Uh, making my 2020 debut down in Hobart. But the thing that made me the most proud about that was uh, seeing my mum and dad in the crowd, you know, and it's not often you see them, um, you know, in the crowd with like tears running down their face uh, because they were so proud of me. So um, to make them happy and make them feel that way is pretty special. And, um, you know, it's, it's something that I'll never forget, that's for sure. Yeah. How do you handle hard times? You've had a couple with your shoulder. How have you been? How'd you handle those? <laughs> yeah, I've had plenty of hard times. Um, for me, uh, so we'll go with the we'll go with the shoulder injuries first. I guess as an athlete, you know, it's all part of all part of the job. It is, you know, well, is getting injured. And look, we don't wish anyone you know, to get injured, but I've had my fair share. And I think the challenge of a sportsman is being able to pick yourself up off the ground when you do get hurt and, and, and get the training, get the rehab and do the absolute best you can and, and the, um, give yourself the best advantage to get back playing the game that you love. So, um, you know, for me, I've had two shoulder recons on my left side I then I, and I throw left-handed. I then had to teach myself to throw right-handed, which, you know, was something you know, completely out of the blue. And then once I did that, I actually popped my right shoulder out. So then I had to go back to teach myself to throw left-handed. So that was a really big challenge for me. Um, and then, you know, other setbacks, I guess, are, are little things like not getting picked in teams. But again, you know, if you don't get picked in a team, I just get motivated and, and a lot more hungrier to, to try and get back there as quick as possible. 
Yeah. What's it been like playing for the Heat the last, I don't know, 10 seasons now? Nine? <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's nine seasons, I think. Oh, it's been awesome. And you know what? I, you know, I'm part of the Bruce. I've been family to the Brisbane Heat. And, and I hope to think that, you know, I've been an integral part of the Brisbane Heat. And, um, you know, just just recently we've had, you know, Darren Lehman come back and, and coaches last year. And our success hasn't been as quiet, as good as, as the early, early doors. But, you know, we've, we've got a good bunch of young players there and we're looking to, you know, make inroads next year. Um, you know, the, one of the best feelings in the world is running out to the Gabba, um, you know, in front of that home crowd that's jam-packed. You know, they're as loud as anyone around the world. And, it, and it's the best feeling in the world as well. So that's why I go out there and try and score as many runs as possible. But it doesn't always work when you're especially trying to hit, hit sixes all the time. But, um, you know, it's been the Brisbane Heat have given me a career that, you know, I've never dreamed of. So, um, and especially the fact that I love 2020 cricket, it's all, um, yeah, makes me very, very happy and very, very proud. Yeah. Are you enjoying playing across the world circuit at the moment in the T20s? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I gave up playing Sheffield Shield um, maybe three years ago now to pursue the circuit, as, as you mentioned. So basically, I'm like a freelance player and I can travel around, um, pick and choose tournaments here and there. But in saying that, I take more risks. So essentially, they're only one-year contracts. So if I don't perform in a tournament, I don't then get you know, the right to go back on, you know, to that tournament um, you know, I've still got to earn the right to get picked up in the auction or the draft, um, whatever it may be. But um, I get to experience the Caribbean, places like the subcontinent with India and Pakistan. Uh, I was about to be in um, England a couple of months ago. Uh, sorry, in a couple of months' time. Uh, I'm, meant, I'm meant to currently be in India. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, it's great. But the only downside is, is that, um, you know, away from my friends and family a lot. And I've got two dogs at home that I love dearly. And um, as, as good as it sounds, traveling the world, playing cricket, it, it does get a little bit lonely at times. And it also is quite hard living out of a suitcase, um, you know, packing your, packing your bags every couple of days and, and moving on. But in saying that, I'm still having so much fun. Um, so hopefully that journey continues for, I'm just turned 30. I'd like to play until at least I'm 35, at least. Yeah. For the, for the listeners out there, what teams have what teams are you currently playing for? <laughs> so currently, so we'll start off with the Big Bash, so Brisbane Heat, um, and that's in December, January, and then I go straight to Pakistan, and that's where I'm playing for Lahore Calanders, um, and then I would have gone straight to India and played for the Mumbai Indians. Um, and then I would have had a month at home and then I would have gone to England to play with the Northern Superchargers, coached by Brisbane Heat, Darren Lehman. Um, after that, I then would have gone across straight away to the Caribbean where I was playing for the St. Kitts, uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, who are a great little island in the Caribbean. And then I would have, after that, I would have gone to... Uh, home for a month and then gone to Abu Dhabi to play in a T10 tournament. So not T20, T10 half the time. Uh, no balls to get yourself in, just swing from ball one. So that's right up my alley. And I would have played for the, I uh, actually don't know who would have played for uh, there. It was the contract still up for grabs. So uh, fingers crossed all this, um, you know, COVID pandemic goes away and we can all get some cricket uh, back on our TVs. Yeah. What's your favourite competition to play in? Yeah, it's a tricky question, this one, because if I say one, one other one will get annoyed. But I think I think the highest um, tournament, highest prioritised tournament is the IPL. Um, obviously financially very well, but I think it's the strongest competition in the world. Um, you know, in the Big Bash, you only get two overseas players. In the IPL, you get four overseas players, and that's with Indian in included. Um, you know, so for me, that's the strongest tournament. Um, you know, and I have good and bad times throughout the IPL because it is challenging because, um, you know, you basically have to do well every game or, you know, there's, there's three or four billion people watching. It is quite mentally tough. I really love the Caribbean League because, you you know, you get to play cricket on these small islands and, and 
you know, during the day before a game, you get to go in nice, clear, clear blue water in Barbados or wherever you may be. Um, and then if I go to England, I'll get to play on some awesome golf courses because I love golf. And then, you know, if I go to, you know, if I've got the big bash, then I get to play in front of my friends and family. And that's a great feeling as well. So, um, again, the strongest tournament is the IPL. But in terms of most, you know, the, my favorite tournament, it's hard to put, um, you know, a finger on, on one because a lot have a lot of positives and, and a couple of negatives. Yeah. What's it been like playing down at the Heat the last couple of years with Brennan McCollum, A.B. De Villiers? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool, hey? Um, you know, for me, it's all about entertaining, um, you know, and, and we've put a squad together that do entertain. On the flip side of that, we, we don't produce our best cricket or we don't win games that we actually should win. You know, if you recall a game last year, we, we had it in the bag and we should have won easy, but, um, you know, we just played some pretty dumb cricket. So um, this year I'd like to just try and turn things around and um, try, you know, rename the brand entertaining and, um, just get the job done, you know, whether it is, you know, taking six singles and over, uh, you know, not, without a risk, I think that's something very important. But going back to your question, I think, you know, A.B. DeVille is best in the world, Brandon McCullum, best in the world. Definitely. These guys, are, you know, <laughs> yeah, and as a young kid, uh, when I was younger, these guys are my heroes. So now I've had the actual the opportunity to play for uh, with these guys. Um you know, when I get, I was first, I was nervous when I was batting with them, but I learned so much from them and I felt I had to, you know, be myself to get the best out of myself as well. If I was, you know, going into my shell, then I'm not going to play the best cricket I can play. And I know the Brisbane Heat needs me to play my best cricket. So at that point in time, what does the Brisbane Heat need? And that's for, you know, all our players to be playing well. And that also takes the pressure off Brendan and, and AB De Villiers as well. So... It's so important that we stay relaxed and not uh, get too tensed up around them. Yeah. I had to ask this, sorry. What's the experience <laughs> like through the IPL auction? Seeing the oh, price go yeah. up and up. Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, it's breathtaking. You know, when I went big um, a couple of years ago, I was actually playing in a semi-final against, no, or maybe a semi-final against the Renegades. Um, at the Gabba and you know I went you know big at the auction and I was just about to go into the change room where you hand your phones in and and then when the when I found out I was I got that price price tag you know I was actually shaking when I was in the nets in the in the warm-up and I couldn't control it because it was it's like a life-changing moment um, for, and for me it was one of the hardest challenges I've had to face in a game so quickly is you know bringing myself back down to earth and and realising, you know, what went on, but then also trying to win the game for the Brisbane Heat, which is more important at the time. Um, yeah, so it's, it's in, on one hand, it's awesome, but the scenario that I was in, it was really tough um, because, you know, you got to play what's in front of you. My priority right there and then was the Brisbane Heat. But, um, yeah, it is. it does get a bit nerve-wracking, but I think every player deserves it as well. Um, you know, there's not guys that get lucky or here and there, I think. You know, it's just the way the world works. And, you know, as I said, there's so much pressure in the game these days because so many people are watching. You know, so many, everyone's got their opinion on social media. So I think it's important that, um, you know, you realise that the guys are actually doing their best um, re regardless of their performances. Yeah. And then after you've been in the auction, going over to play in the IPL with the big crowds and the expectations on you, is that hard? Absolutely. So if my, I've been in the IPL, I think nine years, maybe 10 years now. I played two years with uh, the Deccan Chargers and I was only 19, 20 then, or 20, 21. And I played one game in two years because you can only play four overseas and we had eight contracted. Um, and then I went to Kolkata for six years where I, I, for the first, I think four years maybe, or three years, I only played another two games. So it was, I was learning my trade off the field, and, but it was getting quite frustrated because I didn't play much. And then I got my opportunity to open the batting with um, Gotham Gambia, the captain, and, and I did really well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's tough because, as I said, with that big price tag is expectation. And you know, some games I didn't do well, some games I did really well, but I think the important thing is, is that you just try and stay you know, consistent over the, 
you know, the six weeks that you're over there because then I believe your, your attitude, your um, preparation, your performances, everything will be consistent. So um, it's tough, but in saying that, that's why, that's why we love it as well because we're athletes and we absolutely love, uh, love challenges. Yeah. Now, from other than the T20 circuit, what's it like representing Australia? <laughs> it's the best feeling in the world. So a couple of the best moments that I've ever had is, is singing a team song. You know, not everybody that plays for Australia gets that opportunity, and I've had that opportunity. So it was a great feeling. Obviously, um, you know, a lot more expectation again because you got the whole um, weight of, of your country on your shoulders. But um, And sometimes I put probably too much pressure on myself playing, on myself playing for Australia. And I think probably that's where I let myself down a little bit. You know, I was trying – I was I – was, going out there being, pretending to be someone else when I, you know, if I went out there as if I was playing for the Brisbane Heat, my performances may have been better. Or or the, or the standard was just too good for me at international level. So, um, but either way, I've, I've, I've had a great time. And, and if I, you know, get the opportunity to play for Australia again, then I can guarantee I'll be doing it, you know, my way because um, then, you know, then I've got no one else to blame. Yeah. What was your path to being a professional cricketer? My path, so uh, I went through the rep teams. Uh, my first rep team was uh, the Queensland under 12 schoolboys and then um, didn't make under 15s, I don't think. Um, uh, then it was Queensland 17s and Queensland 19s and then I um, actually went and lived in England for um, six months and played cricket over there. So um, it was good. That was good for me because I, you know, got out of home, uh, learned a lot of life skills, which is important, nice and early. And then I come back and then I dominated club cricket um, against grown men, which is a big stepping stone for me. And then once I got my opportunity, you know, I just trained the house down and I was so focused on what I want to achieve and where I wanted to get to. Then one thing just rolled into another, but. I found, you know, just, you know, for me having a, you know, a personal coach or a mentor that I could pull back on was so important um, because otherwise you can get too far ahead of yourself or uh, you get down after a couple of low scores, then you can quite easily um, lose sight of where you want to get to. So that was a big thing for me is having a mentor. Yeah. What's your best tip for hitting sixes? <laughs> best tip? Um, well... For me, probably do a lot of cross training. So having played rugby league growing up, I felt I was a lot stronger through my core because of like, you know, tackling and wrestling guys. Um, and then also just getting in the gym as well. Everything I do in the gym, I just make sure and it's an explosive movement. So it's not, it's not slow. It's a, you know, it's a clap push up or whatever it may be. It's a jump squat. Um, everything's explosive because you need that in a, in a reaction sport, which cricket essentially is. Um, and then I also love golf as well. So getting out the driver and try and hit that 300 plus meters is, is good fun. But uh, the biggest key is you can't see the ball, um, you know, if you're not watching it. So keeping my head nice and still, my eyes nice and level, and then a full swing. So a couple of key little things that I say to myself is, is basically that head still and, and keep your shape. Yeah. How's it been running playbook? It's been awesome. So uh, I'm talking about a couple of setbacks. Like, um, so I've had plenty, with plenty of downtime with my shoulders um, when I do my rehab. Um, so having playbook on the side has given me a great balance to, um, you know, take my mind away from cricket and I'm also focus on something that I believe is, is important for, um, you know, not only the cricket community, but the, uh, the sporting community. Um, because we're all about, you know, giving providing personal coaches and mentors for young kids that may not get the same opportunity that i had growing up and as i just touched on i think a mentor and a private coach was so important for me um to you know help me in my career so it's been a it's a good passion of mine and i love giving back and i think this is a great way so we're uh, we're starting to get some momentum now we've got about maybe 360 coaches around australia in all sports um, so it's going great guns and hopefully we just keep building, building and uh, we can change the world of private coaching and uh, make, you know, elite athletes, um, you know, much more accessible to young kids coming through. Yeah. What are your goals for the next couple of years, cricket-wise and anything really? Um, so 
My goals, I haven't really thought too far ahead. Obviously, so I'm, as I said, I'm 30 now. I'd like to play till I'm um, at least 35. So one goal is to keep my body nice and strong. And then I think, um, you know, if I do that, I think I'm good enough and disciplined enough to score plenty of runs in the tournaments that I play. Then give, that gives me an opportunity to go back next year and next year and the year after just to um, basically then I can control my, my future and what tournaments I want to play in. Um, you know, and as I said, if I don't play for Australia, that's okay because I'm still having fun playing or doing six tournaments around the world. Uh, I'd love playbook to keep going the way it's going and keep the momentum there because uh, I think that's really important. And then, um, you know, just keep being making smart decisions um, financially as well because, you know, as sportsmen, we've only got a small window, uh, you know, to obviously try and make it or cash in, as they say. And, um, you know, if I do the right things and, and tick all the boxes, then I think I can set myself up and go a long way in my sporting career. Um, so I so I don't have to, you know, you know, work as work as much basically when I'm retired. Um, you know, but in saying that, I've got a lot of hard work to do now, and as I said, make make smart, wise choices. Yeah, how are you keeping yourself busy and fit during this little period with no cricket? Yeah, it's, um, I've got a gym at home. So just before COVID hit, I actually set up a home gym. So I'm really lucky there. Yeah. Um, I've, got, I've got two dogs that, you know, you know, like a run every day. So I do that. Um, I play a lot of golf. So I obviously out in the sun, keep moving. And then uh, I've gotten into my surfing of late as well. So, um, you know, you know, paddling around all the time, it keeps you quite fit. But I think for me now, it's not all about hitting a lot of balls because if I hit, you know, a lot of cricket balls now, actually when the season comes around, I'll, I'll get a bit bored. Uh, so I want to keep my mind nice and fresh from cricket. So I'm trying to train out, you know, in other ways to keep fit because then when I know it's ready to pull the trigger for cricket, then I'm, I'm, I'm physically strong, mentally strong, and I'm fresh as well, um, fresh and hungrier than ever. Yeah. Who's the worst teammates room with through your career and why? <laughs> Worst teammate? Um, I probably have to say Joey Burns, um, and I say this in a good way because he's a good mate of mine. But you know, he's he just talks about really weird things off topic. Uh, he's you know he's not the cleanest bloke. Um, you know, I'm not either. So we you know two wrongs they make a right. But um, no, I love him to death. But I think. Um, you know, we have team standards that we that we have to meet, and, and Joey's always pushing it just above the line. So, um, yeah, I don't want to I don't want to bag him too much because, as I said, he's a good mate. But I'll, I'll say Joey Burns. Yeah. What's the best word that can describe you right now? Uh, best word. Um, I don't want to say content or anything because then I'll feel um, you know too confident. But I just feel. Um, I'm happy with where, uh, um, yeah, happy because I'm happy with where I'm at mentally, happy with myself physically, happy with um, my life in general at the moment. I think there's a lot of opportunities around the corner, um, but I'm happy to put in also a lot of hard work, um, you know, in the next coming weeks and coming years. Yeah. What advice would you give a 12 year old today? What advice would I give a 12 year old today? Hmm, I could give a fair bit of advice, I reckon. But I think um, something that, you know, if you're looking to, to get better as a sportsman, I think it's important, you know, for me as a cricketer growing up at playing club cricket, you have two net sessions a week, right? You know, and you, what, you bat for maybe 15 minutes each time. For me, batting for 30 minutes a week, you're not going to be able to, you know, bat for two hours or three hours or however long you want to bat for on a weekend, um, you know, unless you do extra sessions. So for me that I did growing up was those extra sessions, um, you know, whether it was with my private coach, uh, all my mates, um, you know, because if I wanted to bat for four hours on the weekend and score a hundred, then I, I, you know, I have to do that at practice as well. So that's something really important. But the biggest thing is, quality over quantity so what i mean by that is making sure every session you do it might be three 15 minute net sessions but if it's highest quality and you're happy then that's so much better than doing an hour's worth of poor you know poor training habits so quality over quantity yeah 
thanks for coming on today. No worries, buddy. Um, I hope you hope you learned some lessons there, a uh, bit of advice. Um, you know, I, I, as a as a young kid, I've been given you know advice from guys all around the world. Some works, some doesn't. But yeah, hopefully, I've given you a tip or two, and um, yeah, all the best. So that was Chris Lynn. I really hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube and subscribe on Apple Podcast and leave a review if you could. Thanks, guys. They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown.